My name is Nicole, and I'm the wife of Ohio men's basketball coach Saul Phillips, and we have three kids. Jordan's our only girl. She's 12, Charlie's 11, and Ben is 6. As far as my children go, they feel like they're part of the team in a lot of ways. They're in the locker room after wins. I think they look at a lot of the guys on the team as big brothers. I really consider the players to be part of our family. They are an extended family. You cannot separate basketball from this family at this point in my life. It just is its part of who we are and what we do. I might be the CEO of Bobcat Basketball, but I am a direct underling to my wife around the house. There's no question about that. We make a lot of jokes that I'm the CEO of the household and he can be in charge of the convo, but really when it comes down to it, we're a really good team. In June 2015, my wife Nicole was diagnosed with breast cancer. My doctor was just doing a regular exam when she felt something in my left breast. And she said, you know, Nicole, have you felt this before? And I, I reached over and I said, uh, yeah, you know, I just have really lumpy breasts. They're fibrocystic, it's, it's nothing. And she said, I don't think so. I wanna do a diagnostic mammogram and an ultrasound. The hardest part of breast cancer is waiting for those test results. It drives a person crazy to not know what lies in their future. I do live in a world where if you don't like how things are going, you have the opportunity to change course. I have a good deal of control in my job and something like this comes along could be life and death and you have zero control. The only thing in the world all of a sudden I want to control is my wife's health. I had stage two invasive lobular carcinoma. If you have no idea what that is, welcome to my world. Not only did I not know what those words meant, but I didn't know what they would mean for my future and what the effect would be on my family. All kids are different. Jordan, she needed to be involved in as much as she could. She needed to have factual information in front of her. My boys, they didn't appear to want to know as much about the process as much as to know their mom was going to be okay. There was no doubt that this is the path we were going down, so it's a matter of how we're going to make it work, but can I still be the dad I want to be to my kids? Can I do it and still be the coach that I need to be? When your mind goes to the idea, what would happen if this goes wrong and she's not there? What would I do? How lost would I be? I mean, that makes you realize just how big of a part she is of you and your life. The biggest reason we chose the mastectomy is because my husband knows me really well and he reminded me that I'm more of a sprinter, not a distance runner. A couple months getting back on her feet were going to be easier than her spending six months a little bit each time. That's just the way she is. When I had my mastectomy, the two friends, Anne and Teresa, would come. One would come every morning and one would come every night and they would clean out the, the drains that I had coming out of the side of me from the mastectomy site. When I woke up after reconstruction surgery, I saw Saul. He said, baby, you have a drain again. And I said, oh, and he said, um, I've already called your friends and they're already on board. And it was like the first time that I, I, I started to cry right there in the recovery room next to him because like how many people have that where something happens and, and, and their angels just come and they lift them up and they support them. I mean before I was even fully awake, yeah, before I was even awake, they had a plan in place to take care of me. When you have a community rally around you the way that we did, that's healing medicine. I'm telling you, to win one single basketball game, it takes multiple people doing their jobs correctly to put yourself in that position. I would say it's even more so trying to get through cancer. I mean, you, you go from the doctors, the... Nurses, Saul's players, Saul's players' parents, our church community, our friends, so many people came out to help us. But you know, you can't get anything done without other people, not anything meaningful. I feel like I've got great relationships with my kids, I've got a great relationship with my wife, and I've got a great relationship with my team and my staff. And when those things are in unison, everything else is gonna be fine. That's, we can deal with ups and downs from there. And, Boy, I'm lucky I had those relationships because I needed to lean on them when, when Nikki got sick. I think cancer taught me that my team is a whole lot bigger than I thought it was. There's a tribe of people out there, and I know some of them, but there are people that I don't even know who just knew that I had cancer and loved on me. It was one of those moments that underscores why it's neat to be in Athens, Ohio, uh, why it's neat to be part of this community.